Hello everyone, welcome to our channel Sangeeta to Teach. Today in this video we are going to look at the Code on Industrial Relations 2020 and this is going to be a comparative study of the new reforms with the existing act. So we will see the key features or the key changes that has taken place particularly in this Code on Industrial Relations. So we all know that the IR Code or the Industrial Relations Code has consolidated three legislations and these three legislations are the Trade Unions Act 1926, the second one is the Industrial Employment Standing Orders Act 1946 and finally the last one is the Industrial Dispute Act 1947. So, the provisions contained in the 88, sec 88 sections of all the three legislations. So, these three legislations were having 88 sections. But now, it is 104 sections with 14 chapters. So, the IR code is having 104 sections with the 14 chapters. And all the applicable definitions for the code are brought together in the first chapter. So, the first chapter is having all the applicable definitions. So, the Industrial Relations Code 2020 consolidates and amends the laws relating to trade unions from the Trade Unions Act and the Standing Orders Act will talk about the conditions of the employment in the industrial establishment or undertaking and also uh, Industrial Dispute uh, Act will talk about the investigation and the settlement process of the industrial disputes. So these are the things that are, um, uh, are discussed in this particular law. So, we know that we understood from all the slides that the Trade Unions Act, the Industrial Employment Standing Order Act and in the Industrial Dispute Act 1926 have all been consolidated to one law or a one code that is the Industrial Relation Code 2020. And this is having 104 sections and 14 chapters. And the IR code is now notified as an act on 29 September 2020 and this question is very very important so when uh, the date of uh, when this act has been notified when the bill the, the industrial relation code bill has been notified as an act on 29 September 2020 right coming to the objectives let us understand the objectives of this IR code the first objective is that it wanted to be very transparent and accountability in enforcement of the labor laws and so there is uh, transparency and uh, accountability so there would be an increased employment opportunities in the country which will lead to increased productivity with better industrial relations. When we have better industrial relations, the productivity is going to increase, the employment opportunities are going to increase because of its transparency and accountability. So what are the major changes in this IR code? The first major change is that the continued ill health has been excluded. Before it was included but now it is not included from the definition of the retrenchment. So continued ill health has been excluded from the definition of the retrenchment. The limitation period for raising of any dispute for grievance um, committee has been decreased from 3 years to 1 year. So before it was 3 years but now it is 1 year. The limitation period for raising any dispute for grievance. So grievance it can be a complaint. Complaint uh, against the employer. So uh, individuals cannot raise the grievances. This is one of the major change. It says that individual cannot raise the grievances. The term of uh, the office bearer of the trade union is now three years. So uh, how long an uh, office bearer can be in our tenure? Uh, his tenure is three years. The criteria for recognition of negotiation, negotiating unions is re before it was 75% but now it is 51%. This is also very very important. And the maximum period of agreement tenure is five years. And if an employer adopts the model standing orders of the central government, this this uh, this uh, this rule is based on the standing orders. So, if an employer adopts a model standing order of from the central government, then it must be certified. Then the time period for the raising of any dispute is two years. So, this is also very important. Within two years, you can raise the dispute. After two years, you cannot. And the power to appoint any expert has been vested in the tribunal. So, who has all the power uh, to appoint any expert? The tribunal is having the power. It is very, very important. And 
if in case there is any pen, uh, pendency in the cases maybe it can be in high court or the supreme court uh, filed by the employer it is must and should and mandatory that he pays the full wages to the workers and the very very important change is that the threshold of seeking prior approval for of the appropriate government if there is any layoff or a retrenchment or a closure it is important that uh, the employer has to take the uh, approval from the appropriate government uh, to uh, remove the employees and that limit has been increased to 300 initially it was 100 but now it is 300 the threshold of seeking prior approval without the approval from the appropriate government you cannot remove the employees and uh, if you have to remove the employees there must be minimum 300 members and you have to take the uh, approval from the appropriate government next if if they are less than 300 you can remove whenever you want but if they are 300 and more than 300 then you have to take the approval from the government Okay. okay, coming to the new definitions in this particular code are the employee definition. The employee definition includes the supervisory and the managerial staff and the apprentice uh, registered under the Apprentice Act 1961 are excluded. So these people were included before but now they are excluded. Right, these people are excluded. Coming to the definition of the employer, the occupier or a manager are excluded are included as an employer in the case of factory. So, in the case of factory, the owner is the occupier and the manager, and uh, the contractor is now is also included as an employer. This is another important one. The, so, there is no work uh, uh, a, a separate definition for contractor he is included in the employer itself so he is the employer contractor this is also an important one remember this and the new uh, definition was given to the fixed term employment has been in, uh, included the fixed term employees uh, is an eligibility for they are eligible for all the statutory benefits so they are not uh, there are uh, no uh, these people are not uh, no more considered to be a temporary people but these people are eligible for the statutory benefits also and uh, however they are eligible for gratuity only if they render the service under the contract for a period of one year so they have to at least work for one year to get this gratuity okay Coming to the retrenchment definition now specially uh, spe uh, excludes the termination of the service of the worker as the result of completion of the tenure of the fixed term employment. And um, coming to the workers definition now the monthly ceiling for ex excluding the supervisors from worker so there is a difference between a supervisor and a worker and so the so the limit the wage ceiling is 18,000 and uh, earlier it was 15,000 so now it is 18,000 the worker definition now includes the working journalist the newspapers the sales promotion people also so these are also considered as the workers who are considered the journalist newspapers and sales promotion so this can be a question also so just have a look and this is important coming to the worker definition now includes all the employees including the unorganized employees for the purpose of chapter 3 which is trade union so now you have got two questions here there uh, it says the definition includes the unorganized employees also and now now you know that the chapter 3 is having the trade unions right there uh, there will not be any labor codes going ahead so the schedule 2 and 3 of id that is the industrial dispute act have been dropped so now we are not having any labor codes and all so some of the key changes in the uh, grievance readdressal committee is that uh, before there was uh, it is said to be applicable for having 20 or more workers but now it is retained so now it is not mandatory to have 20 or more workers to have a grievance uh, committee and the maximum limit of uh, members in grievance committee were was six before but now it is increased to 10 uh, so now it is 10 members uh, to be the maximum limit of the members in the 
grievance committee an adequate representation of women workers in proportion to the total women workers employed is required so there is uh, importance given to an women worker to be uh, a part of the grievance committee and the dispute due to the dismissal discharge or retrenchment or the termination will be an industrial dispute so what is an industrial dispute it can be a dismissal discharge retrenchment and termination as well so these are also uh, industrial dispute and uh, when there is no collective nature of even though when there is no collective nature of dispute it is considered to be an industrial dispute and the key changes in the trade unions uh, the negotiating council or the negotiating union which is under the section 14 this is an important section remember this section 14 will deal with the negotiation council and it is mandatory to have a negotiating council or a union if there is a registered trade union in an establishment for negotiating the employer so uh, it is very mandatory and it falls under the section 14 the code also says that the facilities to be provided by the industrial establishment to the negotiating union or a negotiating council so it is mandatory that uh, they have to provide them facilities in order to run this negotiating union or the negotiating council and the key changes based on the resolution of the industrial dispute is that now the industrial tribunal will have two members these two members are the uh, judicial member and the administrative member so this is very important you can have it in the uh, assertion reasoning or uh, or it can be in the statements as well so they are two members in the industrial tribunal they are the judicial member and the administrative member the matter unsettled by the conciliation officer can be taken to the industrial tribunal by the parties within 90 days so within 90 days it can be taken and reported okay and coming to the key changes in the strikes and lockdown it says that no strike or lockdown without giving notice can be done so uh, previously the strike was uh, the strike notice used to be given before six weeks six weeks but now it is 60 days 60 days notice before the strike or lockdown is necessary and it is mandatory and cannot go on strike within 14 days this is also very very important and no strike or lockdown during the pendency of the conciliation or adjudication proceeding is continued so when there is a pen, uh, pendency in this particular uh, case there, then you cannot go for a strike or a lockout and coming to the workers re skilling fund which is very very important and the new thing that has been bought under this ir code is that the workers reskilling fund and it falls under the section 83 and it is very important please remember section 83 will deal with workers reskilling fund so the appropriate government is required to set up a fund so the government is going to set up a fund and the employer is required to contribute an amount equal to 15 days wages last drawn or such other number of days that uh, is notified by the central government of um, every retrenched worker so whenever a worker is retrenched immediately before the retrenchment or the closure the amount is going for uh, reskilling of the employee the fund will be used to credit 15 days wages for the retrenched worker within 45 days of such retrenchment so within 45 days um, yeah, within 45 days they are going to credit this 15 days wage to that particular employee and thank you